Good morning. This week we're going to mold and cast a four-legged creature. And specifically, we're going to do this piece. And it was sent in by Dana. It's a piece of fan art. It's based on My Little Pony, and that has a pretty interesting history. Her, her Dana's pony is kind of a throwback. It's like a 1985 version of My Little Pony. It's important to always credit the original artists and the owners of the, of the object. Uh, this is fan art. It's not for any commercial reproduction or sale or anything like that. It's just strictly for fun. But uh, the original artist that made this is Bonnie Zacherly. And she uh, made it in the early 1980s. I think that the original one came out in around 1985. Doesn't matter. Anyway, she was working for Hasbro. And she worked with another sculptor named Charles uh, Munchinger. Munchinger, I think. I hope I said that right. <laughs> anyway, uh, they're the original artists that made this thing. Became a big hit for Hasbro. And it is going to this day. So now we'll go forward and make up Dana's version. Uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is figure out how to sprue this thing and how to put the vents in. <laughs> and so uh, it, this is one of those things that no matter how you look at it, uh, you're going to have vents because in every which direction, this thing can catch bubbles upside down, forwards and backwards and up in every which way. So a little bit of strategy, a little bit of thought will go into it. Uh, figuring out exactly how we want to hold the piece in position in the mold case and also put in all the vents that we need to put in to make sure that we get a clean casting. One of my favorite ways to start out is just by sketching things out. I got a guy whistling outside. Oh, are you we done? You are done now? Okay, thank you. Here we are inside of Procreate and this is just a preliminary sketch of how I'm going to lay out the vents and the sprue the resin is going to flow down through that extended foot and we'll use that leg basically as our sprue and it's going to rise up from the bottom from the tip of the unicorn all the way up through the head and the neck and into those wings. Those wings are going to cause us some interesting casting issues. We'll talk about that when we get there. And then it'll rise up through the feet, out the bottoms of the feet and um, up the vents. And that's how we're going to do it. This kind of planning really helps me out. I don't have to think about it. When I get into the actual fabrication, I just zip right through it because all the planning is done. And speaking of planning, let's take a look at um, how we're going to cut this thing. Okay, so here's a diagram of how I'm going to cut this mold. And at first glance, this is a little bit confusing um, because it's the strategy I'm using is not to cut up the middle. It's to do a side to side cut. Okay, here you can kind of clearly see uh, a couple of different strategies. The one that I'm going to use is the strategy here on the right on, on the right hand side of the screen. It's this uh, thing where I just follow in a zigzag pattern from leg to leg around and make the cut line there. So you see the orange half of the is one half of the mold and the green is the other half. Here on the left side you can see another strategy for how to do this. You put the sprue right dead center in the middle of the belly. And then you cut around the perimeter of the pony, making cross cuts out to each leg and out to each sprue. So you liberate all those, kind of like we did on that rooster, if you watched that rooster video from a few weeks ago. Similar kind of a, a tactic. But the tactic I'm going to use is the one here on the right. You can see the orange right side of the mold and the green left side of the mold. And I'm going to zigzag from leg to leg. It, it's going to give me, I think, the easiest way to open the mold after the piece is made. And also, it's going to give me, uh, I think, the least complex cleanup. Now that we know how we're going to vent and sprue this model, we need to build a mold case. And the easiest way to figure that out is to take some sticks like this and lay them out just to see how much rubber we're going to need to build around this boy, this little kid. Let me lean over here something about like this. Now in a point like this, um, you don't need a tremendous amount of, of depth of rubber on top of a, a point like that because there's plenty of meat around it. So that's not a worry that this point is a little bit close. Same with like the points of the hooves. The extremities can, can come reasonably close as long as there's a nice build of, of, of rubber around the edge of the thing. So let's see, where are we at here? five and three quarters by seven and a quarter by, let's see about thickness. I got to remember it's resting on the table, so I got to count for that. So where are we at here? Again, the extremity can be close. That's quite a bit. Okay. 
This extremity can be close, but not too close. Three and a quarter, so three and three quarters. Let's go over the table saw and build a box. All right, here we are at the table saw. Let's cut some wood, cut some strips. Let's do it. Back from the table saw, got all the pieces cut out and ready to assemble. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is put these little strips on the end pieces, and that's just gonna give me more surface for gluing. Simplest way to do that is to just clamp them on lightly, no big deal. Make sure they're nice and flush all the way around. Nice and flush like that. Don't have to clamp them super hard, just enough to hold them up in position like that. Break out the handy dandy super glue, the CA, cyanoacrylate glue, and just run a bead down. This is super thin. Just gonna run a bead down and it's just gonna flow down into that crack. That's for sure. If I wanna squeeze a little more on this end, I can. But I don't need to probably, but I'll squeeze a little more just for fun. Okay, did the inside. Do the outside. This isn't a chair leg or anything, it's just a little uh, screw landing. Make it easier to screw. Okay, that one's done. Go on and get the next one done. You get the drill. This is super easy. I would not, you know, glue up furniture panels doing this. <laughs> I'm not sure it's strong enough, but for this application, it's got speed written all over it. Make sure it's even at the end. That's because that's meant kind of dimensional. Run a bead up the inside, just like we did before. Let it just run down into the crack, same on the outside. Okay, beautiful. And the last one. You don't happen to have C-clamps, by the way. Just for fun, I'll break these out since they're sitting here. Beautiful old uh, office big box store clips. Paper clips work just as well as clamps. They might be a little harder to get on, but they work just as well. They are hard to get on because you gotta get, get them gripped right. There you go. But they hold like almighty. They hold almighty and they work. So you can just use these instead of clamps. If you don't happen to have C clamps, you can buy a bucket of these for what a few of these cost. So good deal. Run the bead, run the bead. Okay, run the bead wherever you can reach. Run the bead. Good. And those are done and they're going to be the ends it's going to go like this i'll show you what we're doing we're going to put a bunch of screw holes in here we're going to screw this whole thing together and those are going to sit like this and then the sides are going to sit like this and you see what these strips are for now they're to, for me to get more purchase like that and like that so it's all going to assemble together like that same thing on the other sides open at the top. Perfect. We're done. We're going to finish up this, drill a bunch of holes over the drill press, and then we're ready to wax them. We're at the drill. <clears throat> I'm at the drill press, but I do not think the table is level, just eyeballing it. So I chucked up a big old long drill bit and we're going to check it my favorite way using a one, two, three block, possibly the greatest invention in the history of mankind, by the way. Let's look and see. Oh yeah. Look at that. Oh, that's no, no good. Check out the gappage. That is not okay. Okay, so we use a very scientific method. We just kind of tap, we bump it, tap it. Let's see where we are now. Closer. Closer. Still see a little bead of light in there. Holy crap, that shaft is warped. Well, that's close enough. There's a little tiny sliver of light. It's tight at the top, tight at the bottom, but there's a little sliver of light. Nice manufacturing on that. I know that thing's square. 
Beautiful. All right, done. All right, let's chuck up a drill. I love these washer head screws. Maybe my favorite fasteners now. Beautiful. Let's chuck this thing up. This is very scientific. This is drilling holes. Got the holes drilled. Now let's assemble the case and uh, we'll start with the short sides. All right, let's break out my favorite screws, which are washer head screws. Love these. Woo, all right, that worked out okay. I got the ends thrown on there. Let's get the sides put on. Very nice, coming together fine. See how easy this comes together. Quick and easy. Make sure that's on there square. All right, keep drilling. Couple more to go and we're done. Good. Now, for the top parts, I am thinking I might not even use screws because, you know, the thing about mold cases is you want, them to, you want them to be hold together and not leak. And this one's not going to leak, baby. It is tight. I can see how tight it is now. Woo, I can't see any light at all. That is tight. Okay. But I think for the tops, when I pour the rubber, I'm just going to put these clips on like that. I think that is all it's gonna be. It's gonna hold this case together. These screws at the bottom and four clips at the top. And that's gonna be the whole drill, like that. I think that is going to be how we are gonna hold this mold case together for when we pour the rubber. It is a big chunky monkey of a mold case. Let me tell you, that's a big box. I may have to break out the big tank of course, the mold itself will be quite a bit smaller, but uh, nonetheless, that's a chunky boy. Let's see how this is going to work out. Our boy is going to be in here like this. Just like that. As big as this case looks, it's none too huge. I'm a little bit concerned about all the space down in here because that's a big, that's a lot of rubber, and I may do another trick. In fact, I think I'm going to do another trick in here. While you all were out enjoying your lives, frolicking about, I was busy building some blocks to fill up these spaces. Like that, and like that. And like this, and like that. And we're gonna put those in like that. So the next step is going to be, how this is gonna work is I'm gonna glue these triangular pieces onto the blocks, make it a single unit. And then just, I'm just gonna hold these blocks in with two screws. I'm not gonna glue them in or fasten them in because there's some complexities to this. This mold fills from the top. You know, that's the bottom of the mold. This fills from the top, and these things could potentially cause problems when we go to fill the mold. It may be that we'll have to partially fill the mold and then install these pieces. The thing about doing custom work, the thing about doing custom sculptures, custom mold making is each and everything you, each and every project that comes into the shop is different. And it's got its own set of uh, surprises and its own set of problems. And um, a lot of it is you just try stuff and you uh, build up a library of experience over time, but still, everything's different and everything gets, I kind of, what I wind up doing is just kind of feeling my way a lot and solving problems as I go along. Um, it's, it seems to work, sometimes it fails catastrophically, but it seems to work, and that's what we're doing here. 
I'm gonna get, get these things glued up, get them screwed in, and the next thing we're gonna do is wax all these parts, uh, and then we're gonna have ourselves a mold case. Okay, the wax pot's all hot, we're ready to go. Let's get some wax slapped on these pieces. And I know what you're thinking. This whole time you've been watching me build this case going, week after week you hear me harping about the fact that uh, square molds are lousy and not the way to go and you don't wanna make square molds. But if you'll recall a couple of weeks ago, we did that video with the, uh, the motor mount for the surfboard. And that had a square mold, if you'll recall, that had square mold cases. And if you watch that video to the end, you'll see what the solution was. And I'm gonna use the exact same solution that I used in that video in this video, but this time in real life, you'll see it in action. And to that end, I'm gonna to have to wax these pieces carefully. You'll see what I mean. Fire up the old heat gun and away we go. If you've watched any of my videos, you have heard me profess my love for beeswax before as the ultimate non-stick agent in mold making. And that is why I am applying this wax to these case parts because silicone rubber just loves beeswax. They work together beautifully. The rubber will not stick to anything that's beeswaxed well and it makes taking things apart when it's time to take these mold cases apart after the mold is made, it's gonna come apart easily, all thanks to this miracle substance that we love so much. But you gotta get everything coated thoroughly. My original plan for this video was to get the, uh, to get the pony mounted in the case this week. But as I worked on it, I realized that the sprueing and the venting and that whole business and the mounting of a piece in the case. That is a video all of its own. Uh, there are going to be quite some complexities in doing that and we need to make sure we get it properly done so we get a good mold. So that's going to take, like I said, a video all on its own. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It really helps me out. This is a viewer project. In fact, this is a viewer project number three. And uh, if you have a project, if you have something you'd like, you think would make an interesting uh, challenge for me to do here on the channel, hit me up. And uh, who knows, maybe it'll be your project that uh, I'll be doing on the channel one day. There are two surfaces in this mold that I am not going to wax. This surface right here, this one, and this surface. For right now, we're gonna leave them unwaxed. Why am I gonna do that? Because they're the outer surfaces, and this is where I'm gonna attach all the necessary uh, round pieces to make this into a mold that will hold itself closed really well. So that's what we're gonna do. And that's where we're gonna leave it. I think you've watched me do enough waxing for one week. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate your comments. Uh, and they, comments unbelievably are very important to YouTube. So thank you so much for participating and chiming in and commenting, it's fantastic. I'm always interested in seeing what you're working on and what you're thinking about. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.